All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 40, the scientific evolution from ancient mounds to the Egyptian pyramids. So in the next few episodes, I will be presenting some concepts that have been introduced in the first Land of Chem book, but which also relate directly to the ultimate function of structures like the Egyptian pyramids, which I will finally be revealing in the second book in the Land of Chem series. So as I've mentioned before, the material that I've presented thus far here on the channel, as within the first book, is intended as an initiation to the theory that the Egyptian pyramids were designed to produce chemicals on an industrial scale. But this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the true capabilities of these magnificent ancient structures. So many alternative theorists have proposed that the Egyptian pyramids, for example, are antediluvian structures which date back to before the end of the last ice age. I highly disagree with this statement as it implies an immense gap of time between this intellectually and scientifically advanced ancient civilization and the beginning of conventional civilization circa 3500 BCE, so 7,000 years where there was absolutely nothing. To the contrary, I have proposed both in my book and in episode 25, the timeline of the Egyptian pyramids here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel, how the survivors of this ancient cataclysm that destroyed North America spread across the globe bringing with them their knowledge of astronomy, geometry and mathematics, construction, physics, and of course, chemistry. So in today's episode, I will be providing evidence for the linear progression and proliferation of this knowledge throughout the ancient world and the evolution of these ancient structures as their understanding and implementation of the chemistry became more sophisticated by showing how these ancient mound structures from North America eventually transformed into the Egyptian pyramids. So thank you so much to all the new subscribers here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. If you're watching this video and the intro has your attention, please subscribe to the Land of Chem and click that little notification bell so that you get noticed whenever these videos premiere. If you like the video, leave it a like. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, definitely leave that in the comment section below. I think that is it for the intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go with tonight's episode. So beginning with the ancient mounds of North America, which even by conventional dating are older than both Newgrange and the Great Pyramid. So here you can see both Watson Break and a place called Poverty Point. And Watson Break is conventionally dated to circa 4000 BCE and Poverty Point to 1500 BCE. However, they continue to find structures like these all across America and all across the world, which push the date closer back to 10,000 BCE. And we're finding the same across the planet in structures like Gobekli Tepe. So let's propose that there was an ancient civilization in North America that was completely destroyed at the end of the last ice age, circa 10,000 BCE. And after the proverbial dust settled, those who remained in North America began to rebuild their civilization with their pre-existing knowledge and sciences already intact. And that is exactly what we see incorporated in the placement, geometry, and alignment of these ancient mound structures. So the location of these structures was selected very, very intentionally, and their alignments are deliberately precise. And we will later see the exact same in the passage chambers of Ireland and in the Egyptian pyramids. And this was done for a very specific reason, which I have alluded to in previous episodes. So you can see here the alignments of Mounds State Park and also of Serpent's Mound, which not only indicate knowledge of the solar system, but also of constellations and of the belt stars of Orion. So this knowledge takes a vast amount of time to accumulate, which indicates the antiquity and sophistication of this ancient civilization that was building these original earthen mound structures. So next up, this is research from a gentleman by the name of Carl Monk, and he discovered an ancient system of radian mathematics, which when applied to the geometry and measurements of these ancient structures across the planet, 
encodes their precise location on the planet in latitude and longitude. You can see here, Patriot's Point, which I mentioned in the previous slide. We have Tikal in South America here on the right. This in the bottom left corner is Stonehenge. And here are, are the pyramids of the Giza Plateau. So all of these structures tell you exactly where they are on the planet if you know how to read the math. And Coral Monk shows you exactly how to do it. This is a five hour long and extremely tedious video series that you can find anywhere on YouTube. And I cannot recommend enough watching this. It will completely change your understanding of the geometry and mathematics of these ancient structures. So I'm not going to provide any links to this because his original work has just been copied and reposted by other people. So you can do the research for yourself. But I can promise you that this video series will completely change your understanding of why these structures were built with these precise geometries and why they were placed exactly where they are on the planet. So Carl Monk is proposing, which I agree with, that all of these ancient structures are connected by a global grid system by their geometry, measurements, and alignments. But I would also add that they are deliberately connected by their placement on the globe in relation to the Earth's electromagnetic energy field, which you can see here in this slide. And I will be discussing this at much greater depth in future videos, so just keep this in mind as we move forward. So here are a few images of the ancient mounds of North America, which encode all of these alignments and geometry. So this is an image or reproduction of the monk's mound. And just remember what these look like as we proceed through today's video. And here is a picture of monk's mound that was in that previous depiction. And next up, this is another depiction of Watson Break, that site here in North America that was dated conventionally to approximately 4000 BCE. So let's propose that at the end of the last ice age, circa 10,000 BCE, there was a civilization here in North America building these structures, but some of the survivors of this cataclysm had also spread across the world, bringing with them that exact same knowledge and science. So take a look at this depiction of Watson Break. It is a series of coordinated mounds built intentionally in proximity to a moving water source i.e. here we see a major river. So now, let's take a trip across the Atlantic Ocean to County Meath in Ireland, where we find the exact same thing. And now here we are, ladies and gentlemen, County Meath, Ireland. And this is a picture of the mound complex known as Noth, located near the River Boyne, as are all of the passage chamber structures of Newgrange and Doth, located here in County Meath, Ireland, and you can see that here on this map. So this in blue is the River Boyne traveling through County Meath. You can see here the passage chamber system complex at Noth. You can see Newgrange here and then Doth right here. And as I'm looking at this slide, I can vividly remember the drive from the hotel in Drogheda in the rental car on the left side of the street over to the visitor center at Newgrange. And that entire trip was an absolutely spectacular adventure. And I'll show some on-site pictures here in just a moment. And of course, we will see that exact same construction methodology building these ancient sites along a major river source as we see with the Egyptian pyramids built along the Nile River in Egypt. So this is the exact same thing that we saw in North America with all of the same relevant geometry and alignments, but by this time, let's say 1500 years later, circa 8500 BC, they began to implement their knowledge of chemistry into the already known capabilities of these structures in order to make chemicals that would help their civilization thrive in these new areas. Specifically regarding the passage chamber mounds of Ireland, this included the construction of air intakes and vaulted chambers that would facilitate water and airflow throughout the structure, as I have presented here in episode 23, the function of Newgrange and the passage chamber structures of Ireland, which I will show here in just a moment. So here is a quick tour around Noth, this amazing ancient site of these complex mounds from my 2018 research expedition to Ireland. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I once again put my money where my mouth is and I traveled across the world to analyze these ancient structures in person. And it was a direct result of my experience in Ireland that allowed me to write the final chapter of the first Land of Chem book, which was a monumental accomplishment and one of my favorite parts of that first book in the series.
So here is an exceptional aerial view of Noth, and I'm gonna take you through a quick on-site tour of this location. So the first set of pictures are taken right here as we entered this complex of ancient passage chamber structures. And you can see here, this entire site gave me more the impression of an industrial complex than it did of any sort of burial ceremony, the exact same thing that I experienced when I was visiting the Egyptian pyramids. And next up, I believe the next picture was taken from over here, and you can see me squatted down out in front of this particular mound structure. Yep, and that's me right here investigating this mound, looking out toward the spectacular Irish countryside. It is an absolutely unbelievable experience to see these structures in person. I thought I knew what green looked like until I went to Ireland, and then I really knew what that color was supposed to represent. So the next picture, I believe, was taken from right up here on the top of this little staircase leading to the top of this structure. And you can see this exact same configuration in the ancient mound structures of North America. And here it is, a spectacular view, again, from the top of the largest passage chamber structure at Noth, looking out toward the Irish countryside. And if I remember correctly, you can see somewhere here in the distance, you can see Newgrange, very similar to the Egyptian pyramids, where you can see one structure in the distance from the other, indicating a connection between those structures on the landscape. And here, of course, are just a couple of pictures of me gallivanting around Ireland, exploring and investigating these ancient passage chamber mounds. So next up, this is the internal configuration of Newgrange. And you can see that the sophistication of these structures began to increase as they started to implement functional architecture to produce chemical reactions, which included components like air intake shafts and vaulted chambers, which you can see here from inside of Newgrange. This is the air intake shaft located on the outside of the structure. And this is the central vaulted chamber located inside of the structure. And you will eventually see this exact same configuration and these same components incorporated into the engineering of the Egyptian pyramids. And you can see here center a much more sophisticated upper vault that has the exact same principles of physics encoded into the structure. However, it was just several thousand years later, the engineering, the construction, and of course the chemistry had become much more sophisticated by that point. So now let's move forward another 1500 years to circa 7,000 BCE. And we are now in Egypt. And you can see here the configuration of the passage chamber mound at Newgrange compared to the configuration of the pyramid of Winis in Saqqara. So now, this exact same knowledge has traveled across the world, and over 3,000 years of development has evolved from simple stone and earth mounds into intricate pyramids, and the same knowledge was literally taken to its pinnacle. Just a quick reminder that new Land of Chem merch is now available at www.thelandofchem.com. We've got the new fifth degree logo, an alchemical symbol for hydrochloric acid on the raw image for the central pyramid of Giza, and of course, the original OG second degree logo, a symbol for the red pyramid of Dashur featuring molecular ammonia inside of the structure, designed by yours truly, now available at www.thelandofchem.com. And of course, limited first edition print copies of the book, The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, also now available at www.thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website, grab a copy of the book, pick up a t-shirt. Either way, all the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So I will simply say, thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so now we are back in Egypt and it's circa 7,000 BCE and the Egyptian pyramids are now fully operational. However, if we look back, we can still see direct evidence of this linear progression coming from the ancient mound structures of North America. However, here in Egypt, they were simply utilizing the construction materials that were available in the Upper Eastern Sahara, as opposed to the materials that were available in North America and all across Europe. So what were once these ancient mounds and passage chamber structures eventually became mastabas or underground fermentation chambers here in Egypt. From these mastabas, these eventually transformed into pyramid processing complexes. And these pyramid complexes also experienced an evolution as the chemistry being implemented inside of these structures became more sophisticated. 
So from the steppe pyramid, we move to the pyramids of the Lahoon Oasis. These structures have complex internal systems surrounded by mud brick cores, which have then been encased in precise limestone to form the exact pyramid shape. And then moving on from these structures, we have pyramids like the Pyramid of My Doom, which was a test pyramid for the chemical operations that were occurring inside of the Red Pyramid. This structure was intentionally built out in the middle of nowhere, and it was never intended to be functional. But again, this is a demonstration of that linear progression of the knowledge of chemistry, and I'll be doing a full video on the Pyramid of My Doom coming up here very, very soon, so just stay tuned. Now, from the Pyramids of My Doom, we then have another greater transformation into the red and bent pyramids of Dashur, and the civilization and its knowledge finally reached its peak approximately 4,000 years later, after the end of the last ice age with the pyramids of the Giza Plateau. But these structures are still encoded with the exact same alignments and geometries that were built into their predecessors, the ancient mound structures of North America. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 40, the scientific evolution from ancient mounds to the Egyptian pyramids. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. In the next episode in the series, I will be discussing connections between the geology of the Egyptian pyramids and ancient alchemy. This is another critical episode, building a foundation for the material that will come soon, so you don't want to miss this one. To all the new subscribers, thank you so much for joining here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification bell so that you get noticed whenever the videos premiere. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, leave that in the comment section below. If you want to help support the channel, www.thelandofchem.com, pick up a copy of the book, grab yourself a t-shirt. Thank you all so much for your support. I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you next time.